Snazzy. What? It's been three days since we saw Tommy Oliver's departure video. Are you really still that mad at him? Why shouldn't I be? It wasn't enough for him to just bow out and say he was done, was it? No, he had to hurt as many people as he could while he left. His behavior wasn't just angry, Omni, it was downright abusive. Don't act like you weren't affected by it. Heck, you of all people should know what it's like to be abused by jerks like him. You got no argument from me there, Snaz, but, you know, I've spoken to some of the other analysts. They say that apparently he's been taking a lot of crap from people as well. That's not an excuse, and you know it. All he did was perpetuate the cycle and make himself out to be a hypocrite. He can't even hide behind a persona like Drowning in Horseshoes did. His words seriously hurt. If he had any point at all, that was enough to render it moot. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm trying to put it behind me now. Look, Snaz, tomorrow's the 100th episode. Why don't we just watch it and do our review? Uh, I don't know. What if the episode is bad like the naysayers are predicting? After the week I've had, I don't know if I have it in me to deal with that. And if it's good, I don't know if I can call people out on it without sounding like... him. We'll find a way, Snaz. We always do. Welcome back, everyone. You may have realized by now that I don't really do reviews of episodes so much as I do musings on thematics. Well, it's rather serendipitous that this episode aired when it did, because it gives me a perfect excuse to discuss something that needs to be discussed. Well, maybe not perfect, in fact there's only a tangential connection, but I'm going to talk about it anyway because it needs to be said. You know that speech Mayor Mayor makes at the end during the wedding? I think it goes without saying that it was clearly directed at us, the fans. This episode would have never existed if the community hadn't chosen to express itself through the background characters. So Slice of Life was clearly intended as a love letter to us. That speech was all about how the cast and crew of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic are as fond of us as we are of them. That makes this next part a little hard for me to say, and will likely be hard for you to hear. You see, as much as I still love the show and the fandom, I've noticed something disturbing growing amongst our ranks, and Mr. Oliver's vitriolic diatribe has brought it to the surface. So I may as well discuss it now. I've noticed abusive traits within certain parts of the fandom. Yes, I do realize how much weight that statement carries. Abuse is a strong word to use, and trust me, I do not use it lightly. But why I'm using it is not my speech to make. It's mine. I am coming before the camera for this review to speak to you with 100% honesty. Even though I'm in costume, I am not playing a character. This is just the real me speaking to all of you. I know that using the word abuse might seem a bit extreme, but I want you to know that I really am confident that I'm using it correctly here because I have experience with abusive people. Sometimes I've had to be there to comfort the victims, and sometimes I have been the victim myself. I, I know that might sound hard to believe for some of you. I don't look like I'd be an abuse victim, but it has happened. I found myself in the company of people who get their kicks by hurting others, and sometimes they've targeted me. So, I really do know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to pretend like my experiences have been worse than anyone else's. I probably have actually been very lucky in that regard. And I'm not fishing for sympathy or pity or anything. The only reason I'm telling you this is because I want to make it very clear that when we use the word abuse in this review, we know what we're talking about. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Has to be said. The floor is yours again. Thanks. So, what do I mean when I use the term abusive behavior as it applies to the Brony fandom? Well, here's a little description for you. 
Abusive personalities don't come across as abusive at first. They seem incredibly nice, just the sort of person you want to have around. They're supportive, kind, and make you feel special. You enjoy their company, and they seem to enjoy yours. But you'd better pray that they never get upset for any reason, because then they'll turn on you. Especially if it was something you did, intentional or not. I know the popular image involves beatings, but it goes beyond that. Abusive people don't just hit you, they hurt you. They hurt you in ways that are deeply personal, both physical and verbal, and they don't stop until you agree with them on the idea that you deserve to be hurt that way. Once they've won and calmed down, then they'll start acting nice again, and you, the victim, are so relieved that their rage has ended that you just might overlook the fact that they never apologized for hurting you. Any of this sound familiar? It does to me. I've seen people in the fandom act very similarly to what I described, sometimes blatantly, sometimes subtly. Analysts casually insulting writers they dislike, commenters spewing acid at people they don't agree with, people bullying some of us straight out of the fandom for the most idiotic of reasons, and yes, Tommy Oliver's rant. To be clear, this behavior is currently limited to a vocal minority. Stuff like the fundraiser for Keyframe is proof that this fandom is still mostly full of good people willing to help others. This is also not a problem limited to the Brony fandom specifically. Abusive types exist in every fandom, I'm sad to say. However, of all the fandoms out there, this is the last one where it should be evident, and it has to be addressed because if it's not, it will spread. Unlike... you know who... I'm not going to admonish everyone and wash my hands of you. I'm saying all of this because I know we can stamp that negative element out before it gets out of control, and it's the responsibility of everyone to do it. I remind you of that speech at the end of Slice of Life. That crowd of background characters that M.A. Larson builds up so much? They're us. Unfortunately, some of us appear to be forgetting the values this fandom was built on, so here I stand, warning you all that we need to take action. Because if we don't, this whole movement has been for nothing. Beyond that, wasn't this a great episode? Yeah, I actually do have something to say about the content of the episode itself. The way they portrayed the Doctor was a good compromise, giving him his own character while still paying homage to that lovable madman in the blue box. The new voice of Derpy, excuse me, muffins, fit her better than any of her previous voices. Gummy's scene was absolutely glorious. And as for the scene with these two, do you remember how Bon Bon used to be the uninteresting half of this pair? Her being a government agent is more than any fan work has ever done for her. I never expected this to be what their story arc was about, and I loved it. Sure, there are flaws in the episode, but none of them are major, and fan pandering is not one of them, contrary to popular belief. The plot was incredibly simple, there's no denying that. But it gave us great sequences with great character moments. Some of the scenes felt a little short, like Celestia and Luna arguing the way sisters do. But they still tell us so much, even in their brevity. And, just like the Discord episode, it was fun. And that, to me, is the most important thing that makes this episode work. But I'll let everyone else go into detail about that stuff. I've said my piece for now. Sorry if this wasn't exactly the video you were expecting, but I still think it's important. Next week we'll be back to our regular schedule. I'll see you then.